Good morning, everybody. We're so glad you are joining us for worship. I'm Pastor Benson McGlone. We want to welcome one and all. We especially want to say uh, a warm welcome to anybody who's joining us on our live stream for the first time. If you're watching via our website, we want to encourage you to use an online connection form. That can help you learn a little bit more about our church, but also help you and help us connect more with our community. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, give us a shout out, a wave, a hi. We're so glad you're watching us through that service. It's just a joy this morning to be able to worship the Lord. God is so awesome. He's so big. He's so great. We don't have to be all in the same room gathered together. Wherever you are, if you're watching us from a coffee shop, if you're watching us from your house, if you're watching us while you're traveling, wherever it might be, uh, we are gathered together and we are worshiping God. And that is awesome and it's a great and exciting opportunity just to give ourselves over to the Lord, to be in his presence, to hear his good news and to sing our praises of what a good God we have. And so let's use this time to worship and if you would just bow your heads, I want to open us with prayer this morning. Father, we love you. We thank you for this time. Thank you for an opportunity. What a privilege it is to worship you. God, I pray that wherever we are, our worship would glorify you. It would honor you. I pray your spirit would be upon all of us. Open our hearts to not only sing your praises, but to hear your word, to hear your teaching to know that we are loved and that you care for us. What a glorious opportunity this is because, Father, you are a glorious God. We love you, and so we pray that you would bless this time, that you would bless our worship. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning again, church. We're going to sing this song together on Stop Old God. We're going to worship Jesus this morning. I invite you to sing with us. Heaven thundered and the world was born. Life begins and ends in the dust you form. Faith commanding in the mountains move. Fear is losing ground to our hope in you. We sing this together, Unstoppable God. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. The impossible things in your name, they shall be good. Freedom conquered, all our chains undone. is overcome mercy triumphs in the third day he dawned the darkness was denied when the soul was gone oh we sing unstoppable God unstoppable God let your glory go on and on Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. 
will shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Oh, 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 oh. oh we sing unstoppable God. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and more. Impossible things in your name, they shall be God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Oh, we praise you, God. Saturday was silent. Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. Since when has impossible it ever stopped you? And Friday's disappointment. And Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible it ever stopped you? Together. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the phrase make a dead man walk again. Dope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Fire. Oh, Pentecostal fire is stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Yeah, resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. We sing that say, this is the sound of your rivals. This is a praise make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm calling out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of your rival trying to live. God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just as the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah, if there's anything that he can do, just as the stone that
Thank you, band. I love that song. I love that we're learning that song as a church, and I love the message of that song. As we get into our time of the Word, as uh, we allow God to breathe new life into us, uh, I want to introduce someone. Uh, her name is Kelly Surgic. Uh, she has volunteered to read scripture for us this morning, and just a friendly reminder, if you want to get involved in our worship services, we are finding ways to connect people in our congregation with being here and being involved, and so we thank Kelly for uh, being willing to read scripture and bringing the word to us this morning. This is Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. If you would bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, we thank you for your scripture. We thank you for your spoken word. And so we pray this morning over Pastor John as he brings us uh, your message. I pray that your spirit would be upon him in a powerful and mighty way. I pray that his words would not be his own, but that they would be yours. I pray that as they uh, leave his mouth and travel to our ears, God, that your spirit would just infuse them with your grace, with your love, and with the life-changing power of the Holy Spirit. I pray over all of our hearts and our ears, our souls, our minds, that, Lord, right here, right now, you would just put us in a place to receive that message, not just to hear it, but to um, allow it to impact our lives. And I just praise you, Lord, for Pastor John. I thank you for his heart for this church, but more importantly, his heart for each and every one of the people uh, that you have allowed him to shepherd. And I just pray, God, that in this message that would come through, and I pray that our church would grow from it. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, church. Today is an exciting day. A little bit later, we're going to have people in these pews. First time in-person worship since the 15th of March. I'm really excited about that, and I'm really excited that you're joining with us online. If you don't feel comfortable coming to church in person, this will always be available to you, our live stream. This morning's scripture is found in Luke's Gospel, the 22nd chapter, verses 39 through 46. Jesus went out, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, If you are willing, Lord, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to his disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. 
Got an idea what we're going to talk about this morning? It's a word that occurs hundreds and hundreds of times in the Bible. It's the foundation for a life-transforming relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a regular part of our worship services. It's a way that that last song that the band did, actually those promises are fulfilled about our God doing the impossible, about our God healing and reconciling and doing all of those things that they sang about. Maybe if you looked at the graphic, and I don't really know what it is this week, but if you looked at the graphic about the sermon, you'd understand. We're going to talk about prayer. Prayer. What is it good for? Today's message is going to be kind of a hodgepodge because we're beginning a sermon series that's going to last between six and eight weeks that Benson and I will do, and we're going to be talking about a lot of these things that I'm going to mention briefly over the next couple of weeks. This is kind of like your syllabus for the class. You know, you go and you get your syllabus, and you know what the course is all about. So the first question I have to ask you this morning is, why do we pray? Why do we pray? Well, positive reasons for prayer, connection with God. Connection with God who is our creator, the one who designed you and me, made us the people that we are. Connection with the God who knows us better than we know ourselves. That's important to remember. This God who designed us, this God who is our creator, also knows us better than we know ourselves. And so in connecting with God through prayer, we begin to see his plan for our lives at each stage in our lives. Remember, he knows us better than we know ourselves, so the plan that he comes up with is the best plan for our lives. I'm getting practice right now, looking around. There are a few people in the building right now. I'm looking around because in an hour and a half, I'm going to look around at a congregation. It's going to be so exciting. Strong connection with God. Strong connection in this thing we call prayer requires regular communication. It's a journey because it's unlike any other type of communication that you have right now. And yet it's a very simple communication. It's us speaking to God, but it requires other things in our lives. Reasons why we pray that are negative. Prayer for many of us is a stress reliever. When things get too big, when things get too bad, when things become too complicated, we kind of turn to prayer. Not that we really believe in it, but we're really stressed out. Because prayer often in our lives, if we're honest about it, is a last resort, not a first step. It's a last resort. And if we're honest with ourselves, and if there is a real consequence for not answering honestly, most of us would say that we don't have a strong belief in the power of prayer. You see, we're not very far on our journey in prayer. We haven't taken the steps to where we see the way that God acts, the way that God does all those magnificent things that we sing about. He's doing them in our world today. But it's only through prayer that we begin to see them. You see, often... The only time we pray is when things become desperate. Our struggle, our struggle with prayer is that it's a journey. It's a journey that has a beginning and times where we jump in, we jump out. Sometimes the only time we jump into prayer is when we are so desperate that we have no other option. My strong suggestion to you this morning is if you haven't begun a prayer journey, a prayer life, start one. Start one with simple prayers every day. Our belief in the power of prayer shouldn't be based on my willpower either. It's not about me willing it to happen. It's not about me making myself believe enough. My belief in the power of prayer comes from my constancy in prayer. My constancy in prayer causes me to see the power of prayer, not the reverse. I don't see the power of prayer first and then decide to become a person of prayer. Story of John Wesley, the founder of Methodism. He had a preacher that came to him and he said, Brother Wesley, I don't think I have faith. And Wesley said, you need to preach faith. He said, but Brother Wesley, I don't think I have faith. How can I preach faith? He said, preach faith. Brother Wesley, are you even listening to me? 
I don't think I have faith in God. He said, preach faith until you begin to have faith. So my, my statement to you, my recommendation to you, pray until you see the power of prayer. Keep praying until you see God moving in your life. Keep praying until you see the great miracles that have been promised to us that others talk about. You see, it's in the action of prayer that we begin to see God's presence in our lives. We begin to see God moving in our world. A couple of thoughts on this, though. I want to tell you from vast experience, and I mean vast experience on my part of the starts and stops of this journey. There will be dry seasons in your prayer life. I've had more than one of those. In fact, I've had more than, I, I don't even know how many I've had, but I've had a lot of those dry seasons. And you're tempted just to give up. And when it happened for me, the first time that I saw this dry season, where I kind of gave up on prayer, is when I started getting really interested in prayer, and I started to read about these great men and women of prayer. I read about John Wesley saying, I have so many things to do that I need to get up at four in the morning and pray for three hours. I'm going, ah, yeah, that's got to be me. Tried to wake myself up that first morning, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, and then I started disliking myself because I wasn't like Wesley. And I remember another time is when I first did my Wesley Covenant service. It's a January 1 or December 31st service that Methodist churches use and it's a prayer that he uses at the end of the covenant service. It was given to me when I was ordained an elder in the United Methodist Church and the prayer goes like this. I am no longer my own but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen said it with great vigor on December 31st. Found out it wasn't reality on January 1st. And it led to a dry season. You see, folks, the more you get into prayer, the more the enemy wants to tempt you out of it. The more the enemy wants to make you feel discouraged in it. I remember another time where I had this same problem I started to read about Thomas Merton. If you don't know of him, if you weren't Catholic, you probably don't know about him. But Thomas Merton was this incredible man of prayer. He was a Trappist monk. He was probably the greatest writer of prayer and the greatest person of prayer that the world knew in the 20th century. I mean, he was incredible. And the more I read of him, the more discouraged I became. He prayed for hours and hours and hours. And then I realized, I'm not on Merton's journey. I'm not on Wesley's journey. I'm on John's journey in prayer. And I've learned to know that those dry seasons will come. But I need to get on my journey. Because you see, my journey in prayer and your journey in prayer each individual person's journey in prayer is one, has one main goal, is seeking God. It's seeking God and to know God and to communicate with God and to let God speak to us through the Holy Spirit. Your prayer life will grow as long as you keep that as the one and only primary goal, to seek God, to know God. Now, there's another danger that can often derail prayer. I went to a Christian university, and I saw this one on a regular basis. Spiritual pride. I am so much better than you because I have a better, better prayer life. I spend X amount of minutes or hours in prayer every day, so I am superior to you. You know what? I found that in truly great prayer lives, it produces humility, not pride. 
great prayer life, a great prayer life, in which we are seeking God on a regular basis, produces in me humility and not pride. Remember what Jesus said in our scripture? Pray that you will not fall into temptation. Pray that you will not fall into temptation. This is one of the temptations that we need to be very aware of as we make this journey in prayer, spiritual pride. What we pray for. Pray for a lot of different things. We pray for personal needs. This is called supplication prayer. It's about me, and there's nothing wrong with me praying for me. Nothing wrong with it, as long as it's not the only part of my prayer life. Personal needs like sickness or our children. Oh, we spend a lot of time praying for our children. I still pray for my children every single day. Well, no, I take that back. There have been dry seasons. Be honest. Personal honesty, dry seasons when I haven't prayed for my children or anyone else. We pray about money a lot if we're honest with ourselves. It comes in a variety of ways. But I remember watching Steve Harvey on Family Feud a couple of nights ago, and one of the questions, one of the survey questions was, how much of a concern or how much anxiety do we have about money, one to ten? You know what the number one answer was? 10. What do you think Christians do? We pray about it. We pray about a job. We pray about a car. We pray about a mortgage. We pray about so many things that have to do with money. There's nothing wrong with this. But all too often, we stop praying there. You know, this isn't in my notes, but I want to share with you something that I tell folks who are going through bereavement. It's all right to yell at God. You lost so-and-so. Maybe it was your mother, maybe it was your father. Who knows? But it's all right to be angry with God and shout at him in prayer. If you read the Psalms, David did a lot of that. But the one thing that you need to do is to pause long enough to let God respond. If we are going to be honest with God about our feelings, then stay there in prayer to let him respond. Praying, we also pray for the needs of other people. That's called intercessory prayer. It's not about me, it's about others. Jesus did a lot of that. But you know what his number one thing that he prayed for? He prayed that others would come to know him. He prayed for us, his church, that we would have the power, have the ability, have the courage to introduce others to him. That's what Jesus prayed about. He wanted to reach the world with God's love. That was his mission. That's why he came into the world. For God so loved the world that he came into the world, died on a cross, that people might have life. That's what Jesus spent a lot of time praying about. And so when we pray for the church, and If we're honest, we don't often pray for the church. The people who usually pray for the church work in the church. It's just the way it is. But if we want to imitate Jesus, Jesus prayed for that early church a lot. He prayed for his his disciples who would form that early church, that they would be able to continue his mission. Some of the most powerful prayers are when we pray for that, for the church, for revival, for our community, for awakening, that people could hear the name of Jesus, come to know Jesus, come to have their lives transformed by Jesus. Did you know that in my research for this sermon, I have never once seen any great movement of God, any great awakening, any great revival that was not begun when a group of people, was not begun, let me restate that, they were always begun by a group of people who came together in concerted prayer. They came together and they prayed like Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane with agony, in travail. They prayed with anguish. They prayed that God would move through his Holy Spirit as Jesus was praying, give me the courage to go through with this God because this is the beginning of all great things when I go through with this thing called the cross. Pray like that. Every great movement of God has always begun with that. This morning, Scripture, I just wanted to touch on this just briefly. 
One of the first things that jumped out at me, Hayes is here. He's captain of our softball team. It said that he withdrew about a stone's throw away. And I was wondering, is that a stone's throw of a professional baseball player? Is that a stone's throw of somebody on Gainesville United Methodist Church's softball team? Or is that a Dr. Anthony Fauci stone's throw? Many of you may not have seen that, but it didn't go 60 feet. Second thing, being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. See, folks, prayer that gets us connected to God in this way is both a powerful and a dangerous thing. It's both a powerful and a dangerous thing. We might find as we get connected to God in this kind of way, we might be in anguish over things. Right now, most of us are in anguish over the state of our country and the state of our world. You want to see things change? Pray like Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Build a prayer life that is focused on praying for others. Build a prayer life that has a passion for the revival of the church in America and an awakening of people in our community. Learning to pray is like a journey. And it's done well when it leads us to the heart of God. And I promise you at the heart of God is a passion for the world around us. By the way, did anyone get where the title of this morning's message comes from? It's a 1970s R&B song. War, what is it good for? And the answer is absolutely nothing. Well, folks, I'll tell you, one of the things about our prayer life is very much like that. Prayer, what is it good for? If you never start the journey, the answer is absolutely nothing. But when you get on that road, when you are on that road of being in prayer, if you build that prayer life, then prayer is absolutely everything. Paul tells us that the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. Yes and amen in Christ. Not yes and amen just because I name those promises, but when I am in Christ. Jesus tells us that we can ask anything of him, and he'll give it to us. But it means that we need to be in him. It needs to be something that is in his will. And how do we know what God's will is? By being in prayer. Prayer. Prayer that is powerful, that is effective, that transforms my life is one that puts me in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God, you are the creator. I acknowledge that. And by creating us, you know what is best for us. You've told us again and again and again, hundreds of times in the Bible, that it, prayer is the key pray today, O oh God. I use that word. I, I pray to you, O oh God, today that we would find that life as a congregation. That we would begin that journey if we haven't already, and if we are, that we would continue that journey to be a people in prayer. In Christ's name, amen. Folks, for our Bible study, well, our small groups, our small groups question that I have for all of us, just one, what simple steps can we take to either begin a journey of prayer, to begin a prayer life? What simple steps can we take? How can we encourage one another to take those steps, to be a people transformed by prayer? So those will be, that will be our question for this coming week in our small groups.
your name still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every way at your name jesus jesus you make the darkness tremble jesus jesus you silence me darkness tremble Jesus Jesus breathe call these bones to live call these lungs to sing once again I will praise Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble things that Pastor John shared in his message that really hit home for me uh, was this reminder and this idea that the power of prayer in no way, shape, or form comes from our own faith and our own prayer lives, but it's, it's fully in God. And one of the things I think is so special and so beautiful about that is uh, whether you have the deepest of prayer lives or maybe you have no idea of what a prayer life looks like, 
the moment you begin to pray that first prayer, uh, God's power begins to be at work. And so as, as we pray together as a church, we want to help you begin that journey uh, into a life of prayer. And Pastor John and I have uh, really took some time to discern the Spirit's will for our church and this call that we believe that the Spirit is going to do something big with Gainesville Church. And that begins by building every single person in our church uh, into somebody who prays. And so this morning as I pray, I'm going to pray slowly. Uh, and if you have never prayed before, if you feel uncomfortable praying, uh, just repeat the words that I am praying, and your prayer will be just as powerful as mine, just as powerful as anybody else's, because it's not our power, it's God. So let us pray. Father, we rejoice in you this morning. Open my eyes to the wonders and the ways that you work. Lord, I long to see your goodness. I want to see your goodness. I want to see you at work in this world. Lord, help me to have a prayer life. Empower me to have a prayer life. And God, I might, I might not have ever done this. But in this moment, I pray over my church. I pray over those I'm close to in my church. I pray over those who I recognize their face in my church. I pray for those in my church I have never met. I pray your spirit would be upon them. I pray your spirit would be upon me. Lord, awaken us. Awaken us and make us a people of prayer. Make this church an outlet, a beacon of your power and your glory in this world. We love you, Lord. We want to see you work. Help us, Lord. Help me, Lord, to be that church. We pray all this. If our faith is weak, or if my faith is strong, with boldness and confidence in your power, in your agency, in your ability to work. And we pray it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Bert Miller. I'm the youth director here, if you've not met me before. Um, we have a couple connection opportunities we'd like to mention before we head out this morning. Uh, the first is we have a, a couple small groups we want to talk about. The first is uh, the one that I'm going to be running uh, starting this upcoming Monday, a week from tomorrow. That's uh, August 17th on, uh, uh, online on Zoom at 7 o'clock. Um, it's going to be entirely focused on uh, learning about Christianity and its relationship with other world religions. So if that's something that you might be interested in, we would love to have you uh, come, come talk to us and join that small group. Um, Samantha Allen, our connections director, is in the Facebook chat right now. Um, she is the best person to reach out to if you want to get uh, involved with that. The next is Pastor John's small group, which normally meets later on on Sunday mornings. Uh, because we're going to be doing in-person services on Sunday mornings, we are uh, moving that to uh, Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m., also online. Uh, if you want to get involved with that one, please reach out to uh, Sam Allen as well.
Also, uh, don't forget, we are still uh, working in support of the Haymarket Food Pantry right down the road. Uh, if you have any food that you would like to drop off here at the church, please do so. Uh, we are open Tuesday through Friday um, from 10 in the morning till 2.30 p.m. Um, there's a list of specific needs that the, the food pantry has on their website. Uh, give that a look if you get a chance, because there's some things that they have quite a lot of that they're not really accepting more donations of. But we would love for you to uh, help out with that. Finally, uh, for those of you that have been participating in our Faith at Home uh, week-to-week challenges, or challenge this week in relation to uh, the, the sermon to, uh, that Pastor John had earlier this morning, is to take time, set aside some time, either in the morning or in the evening, just some time during the day, 10 minutes every day this week, to pray, to really be in relationship with God, to, to, to really sit down and, and not just speak, but to listen when you pray. For those of you who have been around churches for a long time, most of your life, doesn't he look like the prototypical youth director? I mean, he does. And we love Bert so much, and I'm so thankful for him and the work that he does. I'm excited about his Bible study. Before we get to the benediction, I do want to say to all of you who might be out there watching right now, but planning to come for our in-person worship, these will be required of everyone including the preacher who's going to preach through one of these. So please bring one with you as we gather together in just a little over a half an hour for our first time since March the 15th. Benson, I want to thank you so much for that prayer. I thank you for the way that you did that to allow people to pray with you. I think it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so I want us to bow our hearts now and ask for that spirit to come into our lives. Gracious God, as we leave this place, May your spirit abundantly fill us and go with us that we might be a people of prayer and also a people who are the hands and feet of Christ. In his name, amen.